What's up everyone? Alex here. We live in a world where remakes are now a frequent occurrence, with many different approaches. Some do a refresh of its game's graphics, modernizing their aesthetics to closely match current standards. Some even go a little further, introducing brand new features that even distinguishes it from the original version. And then you have Trials of Mana, a game that is, outside of its 3D look and feel, only mildly changed from the original, and one that is so ahead of its time that it still manages to blaze a trail more than a quarter of a century later. This review was made possible by viewers, like you, so please leave a like, comment, then subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Trials of Mana is a remake of Seiken Densetsu 3, an action RPG exclusively released in Japan on the Super Famicom in 1995. The game, shown running on the Nintendo Switch, is developed by Scene and published by Square Enix. In a world where mana is slowly fading and war being an inevitable outcome, six adventurers go on a quest that'll bring them together on a journey to reclaim the powerful sword of mana and prevent a devastating calamity from befalling the world. As they travel the globe, they'll encounter numerous villains who will try to thwart their every move, as well as deal with their own personal stories that intersect with the various events that unfold. It is up to you to see to it that their journey succeeds, building them up into powerful warriors that can take on the nasty monsters that have begun their march towards destruction. Trials of Mana is a unique remake in that the original game never arrived in the West, so most people who will approach this will have no nostalgia for it whatsoever. Nevertheless, Trials of Mana transcends its age by having a ton of ambitious features that are still uncommon in today's JRPG landscape. For instance, Trials of Mana features a cast of six unique playable characters, and you're able to choose three of them to play as as soon as you start the game. While the first character you've chosen determines the course of the main story, you're also able to experience the prologues for each of your selected party members should you wish. And if you don't want to, the game still provides you with an abbreviated backstory in order to absorb these quickly. Trials of Mana weaves in each individual character's stories within the main narrative, blending the overarching plot with the personal challenges that your party faces. This clever plot device adds in a splash of variety with every playthrough, while still maintaining the linear storytelling that was prevalent in games from this era. While parts of the game's story won't change significantly with subsequent playthroughs, I do hold the view that you'll have to play through the game three times in order to fully experience everything in it. In order to do so, you'll have to ensure that you select a main protagonist who's slated to fight a different villain than you did prior. There are three main villains in Trials of Mana, and two characters in the cast share the same evildoer. Angela and Duran share one, as do Reese and Hawkeye, as do Charlotte and Kevin. Speaking of, one of my favorite things about Trials of Mana happens to be how super friendly repeated playthroughs can be, which encourages you to play as the other characters in the game. This is done by way of a very generous new game plus that carries over levels, training points, equipment, and money. To sweeten the deal, you'll also receive an ability that grants a whopping 300% experience point multiplier for defeating enemies in battle. I don't often go into excruciating detail when it comes to a game's new game plus features, but I really wanted to bring this up because it makes replaying the game a ton of fun, to the point where it's almost game breaking at times. And given that a typical playthrough of Trials of Mana clocks in between 20 to 30 hours, depending on how meticulous you want to be, you can definitely get your money's worth by going through the game with a fresh set of characters all over again. While I have no personal connection to the original Trials of Mana, I do have a connection with The Secret of Mana, and hearing reorchestrations of familiar songs from that game quickly got me invested in the remake. I'm sure you've heard of stories of how the SNES JRPGs had some of the best soundtracks in the history of the genre. Trials of Mana continues that tradition by building on top of what's familiar and creating a soundscape that is diverse and very pleasant to listen to. The remake does contain both the original and reorchestrated versions of the songs in Trials of Mana, but after listening to some of the tracks, you can tell that with the ambitious reorchestrations of certain songs, oftentimes the original version bites off more than it could chew. 
It's in this sense that the newer reorchestrations breathe new life into these songs, with its melodies finally represented in the way that it was originally intended. With almost every single aspect of the original game intact, Trials of Mana is a shining example of how a remake should be handled. While I don't envy the developers at all for having to figure out which parts of the original to keep and which ones to improve upon, I believe that they struck a perfect balance by allowing the reverence of the source material to dictate the directions in which to take this remake, keeping much of what made the original so innovative. Having never been released in the West before 2019, the remake of Trials of Mana does face a unique set of problems that didn't plague the original release. For starters, the game features some strange localization choices when it comes to the portrayal of its cast. These choices can be seen in both its written text and its English voice acting, with certain characters like the beast man Kevin speaking with a cadence very similar to William Shatner. Priest of Light and Windle will tell me how to bring you back still my best friend, Carl. Or Charlotte the Healer, with her dialogue's letter R's replaced by W's in an effort to sound cute and adorable. I may be as small as you are, but I happen to be 15 years old, so I'm basically an adult. Fortunately, you can change the voiceover language to Japanese in order to get past these performances, though you'll still need to deal with Charlotte's W-laden dialogue text despite that. Still, I lamented this missed opportunity. I've read anecdotes from some of the game's voice actors who have said that they were never given additional context as to what was actually happening on screen. This is reflected in the game in a very obvious way, with several scenes dialogue that neither matches the character's movements, nor properly matches the mood of what's actually happening. Despite these challenges, you can tell that the actors tried their best to work with what they had. I just wish that these performances were more consistent with the presentation. With the change in perspective also comes the challenge of creating a camera system that doesn't get in the way of your gameplay. Trials of Mana's camera isn't bad by any means, only that in certain situations, you may find yourself faced with jarring camera behavior, as well as obstructions that can take you out of the experience. This is partly due to how the developer wanted to stick to the original game's aesthetic and level design as much as possible, which means allowing tighter arenas to exist that weren't really designed to have 3D cameras being flung around. For the most part, I do think that many of Trials of Mana's arenas allow for a kind of flexibility in the way that you can position your camera. But there are noteworthy arenas in the game that make camera control a bit cumbersome, with one particular encounter that features damage markers that fill almost an entire room. It's in this sense that I understand the decision to remove multiplayer entirely from the remake, as even the consideration of trying to create any sort of local co-op in a sometimes chaotic 3D environment would have introduced a lot more issues than what it's worth. This leads me to how Trials of Mana implements combat AI for each of your party members. The remake allows you to customize your party member's behavior with the use of simple sliders that determine their priorities in battle, how often they'll use special moves, class strikes, items, and curative spells. Except they don't always work. At one point during my playthrough, I had set my party members to unleash their class strikes as soon as they're able, only to have the AI hold onto it for no apparent reason. In the arena that I described a few moments ago, the AI had absolutely no idea how to position themselves during the onslaught of attacks, repeatedly dying as a result. I understand the argument from developers that co-op AI shouldn't fight better than the players themselves, but having AI that feels like it's just always phoning it in doesn't feel good either. It's in this sense that the AI featured in Trials of Mana is, for better or worse, a really good example of an action RPG that can easily turn away interested players, turning the nightmare of having to babysit other party members into a harsh reality. Despite these gripes, what will really draw you into Trials of Mana apart from its charm is its combat and progression systems, which are an absolute joy to experience. There's nothing too complicated about it either at first. You have a light and heavy attack, and depending on how many times you press light attack, your heavy attack will change. Simple and familiar, right? 
While most games that utilize this kind of gameplay tend to be very button mashy, Trials of Mana's combat feels a bit more deliberate thanks to the different attack animations that are unique to each character. And while you can opt to brute force the game and mash your way through it, you might want to know that your performance during battle does affect how much experience you receive at the end. These rewards are given to you each time you finish battles in record time, finish off enemies with your class strikes, or even when beating all of your opponents without ever taking damage. Addressing the earlier concern of AI not working as intended, I'm happy to report that the latter reward only applies to the character you're currently controlling. This means that no matter how many times your other party members receive damage, if you yourself manage to get through the battle unscathed, regardless of which characters you've controlled or switched to, you'll still receive the reward. While I'll admit that the experience you earn from these rewards can feel minuscule given how small the multiplier bonuses look, the mere presence of this scoring system is enough to subconsciously urge you to want to play better and smarter. In fact, when you start to formulate strategies as opposed to just tackling the game's battles head first, you'll find that engaging in the system in this way feels more fulfilling, especially when you factor in all the experience rewards you receive after a job well done. Complementing the action is the ring menu carried over from previous mana games. The ring menu gives you access to both items and special moves, pausing the action on screen once you bring it up. You'll also be able to directly tell your other party members to use items and moves from this menu, which slightly helps mitigate the frustration of the AI not doing what it's supposed to. If you're the kind of person who wants things to move along faster, you can map items and moves to corresponding shortcuts, access by holding the L or R buttons, then pressing any of the face buttons. As with older mana games, you'll have to choose which items will be available in the ring menu, so you'll have to make sure that you've set the right items as you won't be able to access your main menu during battle. As previously mentioned, you're also able to unleash powerful super attacks called class strikes when your meter reaches 100%. Early on, you'll be able to build this meter simply by hitting enemies with powerful attacks and collecting the trinkets that fly out after impact but you'll be able to build this meter up faster through a combination of equipped items and the game's progression system. I'll be perfectly honest, when I first started this game, I had no idea how much customization the progression system would actually allow. Heck, I didn't even know that it had some sort of class system implemented. So imagine my surprise that Trials of Mana had both to offer. Every time you level up, you'll be given one training point to spend on any of the five tracks available to you. Each of these tracks contain permanent stat boosts as well as equipable passive abilities and special moves unique to each character. The requirements shown are cumulative, so, for example, if you want to equip Reese's counter ability, all you have to do is spend 4 points on that track to unlock it. But it's not enough to unlock the ability, as you'll have a limited amount of slots to activate each character's abilities. More ability slots will unlock once you upgrade your character's class. While Trials of Mana's class system doesn't exactly allow you to switch from a healer class to a strong physical attacker, for example, it does allow you to spec your characters in such a way that it alters what moves you receive and how your class plays. For instance, taking Kevin towards the light path will improve his ability to heal the party, whereas taking Kevin towards the dark path will unlock weapon-enhancing moves. While your first class upgrade does not require anything outside of reaching level 18 and unlocking the feature, later class upgrades will require specific class items to unlock, regardless of whether or not you want to take your character towards a light or dark path. These items only materialize when you plant triple question mark seeds at inns. These triple question mark seeds drop randomly after battle, so it might take a bit of time to receive the right class items if you're trying to go through a particular path. When taken together, Trials of Mana's combat and progression systems offer a comfortable level of customization that complements each other, often delivering satisfying ways to fashion your ideal build for each character in interesting ways. It's the kind of design that lets you immediately see the results of your actions, making progressing through the game a more satisfying experience when compared to other games in the genre. While the Mana series has been around the block, None of these recent games have reinvigorated my excitement for the series as Trials of Mana did. Despite its shortcomings, the game still manages to toe the line between nostalgia and modernity in a way that no other remake does. And given that the developers didn't even have to add much quality of life features to its base design, I think that's proof positive of why this game was way ahead of its time. 
with unique playable party members, a wholesome cast of characters, and a well-paced and fun journey. Trials of Mana is a fantastic adventure that'll take you back to the heydays of Squaresoft, while delivering a satisfying and exciting experience that'll captivate you until the very end. That is, until you tell yourself just one more time, and start your journey all over again with a fresh new cast, a whole new villain, and new stories. Trials of Mana is just that good, and you'd do well to take on this adventure right away. <laughs>